afternoon. My name is Inju Kim, and I'm a bioinformatician at the Institute for Translational Research and Therapeutics. It's also known as ITMAP here at UPenn. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me here to be part of this exciting workshop. And today, we're going to learn about RNA sequencing. I will give you a brief uh, overview, and then we'll walk through the RNA-seq module. So before jumping into the technical details about RNA-seq, I'd like to share with you uh, how I became a bioinformatician and what I do. I've always been interested in science. My favorite subjects when I was in high school were biology, mathematics, uh, chemistry, and music. And um, I studied biology in college, and I received a master's degree in biotechnology. After completing my master's degree, uh, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, after completing the master's degree, uh, I worked at a high throughput sequencing facility here at Penn where I got hands-on experience in the full sequencing pipeline from preparing samples to basic data analysis. So a typical RNA-seq experience consists of these four steps. It starts out with designing an experiment, and then you have to prepare a library for se sequencing. And then you do the actual sequencing, and then comes data analysis. I was particularly intrigued by this data analysis step, the step where the raw data gets interpreted into biological conclusions with many different complex steps. This led me to where I am now. So at ITMAT, I collaborate with many researchers to find answers to interesting biological questions by performing statistical and computational analysis as well as developing methods for each step of this um, data analysis. All aspects of RNA sequencing analysis are still under active development, and often it's very difficult to choose which tools should be used for each step. So in addition to carrying out all these analyses, um, our team is focused on benchmarking of the various stages of RNA seq analysis. So why do we study RNA? All cells in your body have the same DNA sequence. And those cells have many different shapes, sizes, and functions. For example, macrophages here are specialized in removal of dying or dead cells in cellular degrees. And neurons here function to process and transmit information in the system, nervous system. And as you can see, they have completely different shapes. So how do we get all of this diversity from the same starting point? This is done by activating different combinations of genes. When a gene is activated or expressed, it produces RNA. By examining the RNA from a cell, we can tell which genes have been turned on. So studying RNA brings us closer to understanding how a cell performs its specialized functions. And with that, we can begin to answer questions like these. What leads to drug side effects, and can we prevent them? So many pharmaceuticals are designed to target one or a small number of genes or proteins. Using RNA-seq, we can study the expression of all genes affected by a drug treatment. And with this information, we can predict which off-target genes lead to side effects. And we might want also want to ask a question like, what causes jet lag? So scientists can use RNA to track the internal circadian clock of humans and model, model organisms like mice. By extracting RNA from humans and mice before and after they have experienced jet lag, we can see how the jet lag affects the normal functioning of the circadian clock. So RNA sequencing experiment starts here. During the first step, researchers set up the experiment to address their questions. And RNA sequencing allows us to measure the quantity of different RNA molecules in a sample. We can see which genes are activated and to what degree. 
And generally, RNA-seq is used to compare gene expression between conditions <coughs> such as drug treatment and control. Using that information, you can see which genes are up or down regulated. And additionally, we can read the nucleotide sequence of the RNA molecule we analyze. We can see where exactly in the genome RNA molecules are transcribed from. So the next step, we need to prepare libraries for sequencing. To sequence RNA, we start out with full-length RNA extracted from cells or tissue sample. Current technology does not allow us to sequence these full RNA molecules directly. And since the whole RNA molecules are too large to sequence, we need to break them into smaller fragments. And this is the fragmentation step. Next, we perform a series of chemical reactions so we can read the molecules using a sequencer. We convert the fragmented RNA into cDNA and add the sequencing adapters. The collection of molecules reading for sequence is called library. And we can now use those libraries to sequence the exact and using the exact machine we use for DNA sequencing and exact same chemistry. So the next step is performing actual sequence. And as Jun Yang showed in the previous session, it's done using the machine called, uh, this is a sequencer. And then from there, you can take images of each cycle. And um, there is a program you can use to convert those images into these uh, raw reads. And this is an example of the raw data. So this is what we get from the sequencer. And the format file, file format is called FASTQ. I don't know if you can see from there, but um, it contains a read ID and the uh, raw read sequences. Here you can see A, G, A, T, T, C, T, G, like that. And then um, it also has this quality score Jin Young mentioned earlier.